Herman Rice. We're going to build a plain stamp shoe out of 5 sixteenths by 3 quarter, 11 and a half inches long. Uh, this is going to make a plain stamp shoe. I'm going to build this shoe exactly how I teach my students to build the shoe when they're in school. Because building the plain stamp shoe has all the basics and all the fundamentals in this shoe. It's the hardest shoe to make. You've got to have your nail placement right, your forging skills have to be right to forge heels, uh, your leveling skills have to be right to level your shoe. The, the plain stamp shoe is the toughest shoe, and if you can build it correctly, you can build any other shoe. First thing we're going to do, we're going to put some reference marks on the shoe. We're going to mark center. And I offset just about a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to go an inch and a half for some toenail marks. I like these marks to be as accurate as possible because I can use these marks later for reference points. We're going to use these toenail marks for reference points. When the metal is hot, it's a little hard to see these. So I'm going to put a mark on each end, right at the toenail marks. This is 5 sixteenths by 3 quarter inch steel. I'm going to heat the, I'm going to heat the material so I'm definitely hot middle third of the material. That's where we want our pen. We're going to make the, well actually I'm sorry, back it up. We're going to make it the way the students make it. We're going to forge our heels first. We're going to put round heels on each end of this. Just a simple pleasure heel. So here I have, I have the four main heels that are used in horseshoeing. We have the roadster heel, the round heel, the pleasure heel, and the hunter heel. The hunter heel is a, is a tight fit heel. It's designed for there not to be any metal hanging over so the horses don't step on it. The roadster heel is a full fit heel. It's designed for a fuller fit with length and width and it's got a heavy check to keep the commissures open. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to put our heels on. I'm just going to build a, a nice pleasure heel here. I'm going to start on the corner of the metal, pull this to me, and pass this back around. You don't want to spend a lot of time on your heel, you just want to get your heel made and get on with your horseshoe. So I've got it roughed in, I can just edge it up a little. Put a little bit of check on the inside edge so the shoe won't be trapped. Let's have a finish here. So I said earlier I'm just building this exactly how I would build it if I was teaching a new student how to build a horseshoe. I'm going to try to keep this as, uh, as educational as possible. And the whole key to building a heel correctly, whatever, what always happens, you'll wind up with a fish lip in the end, you'll get a cold shut. The corners are the hardest thing to get rid of. You want to come in at a 45 degree angle, grab that corner and pull it back on top, on each side. Once we got gotten rid of that corner, then the forging the heel is not hard. If we don't get rid of that corner, that corner is pushes around, and the further it pushes around, the harder it is to get rid of. So we'll just forge our inside heel. Tapping the corners and then bringing them back around. I'm going to draw this just slightly with an inside branch. Not much. Edge it 
up. I like to take all the sharp edges off of my work. The better I can hammer finish this shoe, the less I have to grind this shoe. We have another finish here. So at this point, we've got our heels made. We just need to bend the center third of the metal. Yeah, the center third of the metal. So I'm going to try to heat up the middle of the metal, and I don't want the heat to be uneven. I don't want it to be from one mark to the end, or the middle to the end. It needs to be pretty well even in the middle. So it makes it easier to bend my material. I always put the outside branch in first. I hold on to the inside branch. I always put my metal in the fire. So when I bring it out, I'm ready to work. I want my, my toe dot to be on the outside end of the shoe. So when I put my metal in, I want to bring it out. So when I come out, I'm lined right up to do just as that. So in this situation, my dots will be up. Or my dots will be down and pointing away. So my heat's not quite centered. So I'm going to heat this up until my heat becomes centered. That's a real common mistake. Uh, a, 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 novice, a novice student would bring that out and try to build that toe bend, and it's physically impossible. The reference marks I put on the shoe on the edges in the beginning, I'm going to use those reference marks to make my toe bend. I can literally hit from one ample double mark to the other ample double mark. So now we have a pretty even heat. Okay. I'm just going to start my first ankle double mark and just tap straight down and feed my metal into it. And then I'll repeat. And all I try to do in the beginning is build up a slight dome. And now I can go to the horn and put this into any shape that I want. And I'm going to build a nice round toed front. I'm just going to tap around each branch until I get the desired toe bend that I want. When I'm done, I want to speed up my toe bend so I don't have sole pressure. I did just a minute ago. If a common thing that happens with a toe bend, your inside branch will wind up longer than in, and your outside branch will wind up shorter, or longer and out and shorter and in. If you wind up with a, a long inside branch, you can just tap it down right on this heel, just a few hits, and that'll push this branch down, and we can Extend the lateral branch by just giving a few little taps with just a little bit of space right under here. You can't be touching the anvil, you just need a little space. And that'll fix what we call rack, or I just call it proper balancing of a shoe. Because we want our shoe to be as symmetrical as possible the entire time that we're building it, to make our life easier. So now I'm going to heat up to do the lateral branch. The reason I do the lateral branch first, when we're building shoes, we tend to build shoes a little on the wide side. If it hasn't been finished being bent, we haven't overdone it. As soon as we overbend a piece of metal and we have to straighten it, we're fixing it. So with that being said, I'm going to leave my shoe wide. Feet typically have more width to the lateral side. By doing my outside branch first, I do my medial branch second. When I close this shoe up at the end, my medial branch will come in quicker than my outside branch, helping me make a balanced shoe. If I did that backwards, if I did my lateral branch second as I close it up, my outside branch would want to come in and leave the, out, the inside branch out. 
I'm just going to hang over about half the, half the length of metal. I'm going to keep my tongs in line with my inside branch. Put my outside branch up, sticking over about 50% over, and just tap right on the other side. Trying to hold my tongs as lightly as possible. And we pretty much have our, our branch bent. It's just slightly wide, but we don't mind it being slightly wide because we can close it up as we go later. So we just look for a nice little bend. And I'm going to show you a, a nifty trick I have so we don't burger up where the heel nail goes. It's really, really easy to get the heel nail back too far or up too far in the branch. I've got a pair of dividers here. I'm going to set these dividers, and I'll pick this up and show it to you. I've set my dividers, and I guess where the heel nail would go. I swung them to the inside edge, and I swing it around. And I like there to be between the check of the heel and about, oh, up as far as three eighths of an inch up. Left over, and that'll let me know where my heel nail can go. If I were to stride this, and my dividers would hit the end of the heel, I'd know it'd be too far back, or if it would be up far, you know, like three quarter of an inch or so showing, I know my heel nail will be bunched too much. So I'm just going to take my dividers. I've done that. I'm going to scribe my line. And I'm going to mark my holes. I'm just doing this because I have the heat here to do this. I'm going to mark my holes in the middle of the metal. The reason being, we want to hit, we want to hit middle in this piece in this web, right in the middle. I can put the punch directly on the metal. I can move my head over to the front side, and I can see a three-dimensional view of the punch to line up from inside edge to outside edge. And I can stand this way and get between the lines, between the nails, and I can come this way and see right inside and outside. If I need to, I can tap it around, and then once it's right, I can give it a hit. I will explain. The reason I don't like doing the same thing this way, I can do that. I can set this here, but if I walk over, to line this up, I did the pitch. Pitch is the angle in which the nail hole will go through the shoe, and it's meant to mimic the angle of the hook. So if I pitch this right, I have to swing cross body to hit this, or I, what, what people do, they step over here to hit. So it, 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 it's, it's, it's either a two-step deal, or you have to guess. And it's, it, it, people get really good at guessing this. But for teaching, this is hard to do. It's hard to guess that right. So I found with students, the best way to teach it is to put the punch here in line. We can look right over the edge. We can divide the metal in half, get our position. We can pitch, and we can just hit straight at the tool. So now we'll repeat. We'll do the same thing on the medial branch. And when we're building horseshoes from scratch, there are several things we can do that you can't typically do with a store-bought shoe. We offset, I mean, this is a hind shoe, the front shoe I'm making, I offset a sixteenth of an inch to allow my lateral branch to be a little, a little longer and fuller than the medial branch. When we did that, we allow, there's a little more metal here. So when I punch the nail holes on the inside, I can, 
I can pinch these together just a little bit to make sure we don't get behind the widest part of the foot. And we can spread out the lateral nails just a little bit to make sure we don't get behind them. These are all just little things that you can't achieve when you're just using a store-bought shoe. So we're going to turn this medial branch. I'm going to turn it exactly the same as the lateral branch. I'm going to hold the opposite toenail, palm to the line, about 50% of the metal hanging over, and just tap on the other side. So I'm going to try to keep the same piece of metal right on top of the handle. So just run it all the way around, right to the heel. Did it just a little bit, but bring it back just a little. There we go. And it's my inside branch. I can close it up. It's hot. I want it to be in. So I can close it up just a little. And we'll have half of our horseshoe. Ready to have nails marked. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I don't need to reset the dividers because I already have them set from the other side. I want to make sure your shoe is level before we mark holes or we'll jump on you. I'm going to spin the shoe around. Start with my toenail. I'm going to go just above the line on my heel nail, because I have less metal there. And I've got my blank set up to have holes put in. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and I teach the punch holes in the lateral side first, and then the medial side second. The hook wall is typically always thicker in the toe and thinner in the quarter. So I'll angle my punch, which is called pitch, a little more pitch in the toe, a little bit less at the number two nail, and a little bit less almost straight up and down right at the quarter, because you'll have less angle at the quarter and more angle at the toe. You want to keep your tongs cool. These tongs are sticking just a little. It makes it a little awkward to work with. You just have to get used to it. They probably need to put a new rivet in them. If I tap at the end, it'll send us Helps shore up the river just a little bit. There we go, we've got a nice punching heat. So I'm going to start with my drift. With no pitch on the heel nail. A little bit more on the number two nail. Just a little more on the toe nail. I'm going to take my holes about 70% down. I'm going to remove my frog eye. I'm going to hit each frog eye individually first. Just a knit it in. And then I'm going to work right down the center. And then I'm going to work down each edge. And keep my same pitch with my virtual. And if our punch is bottomed out, we don't need to hit the virtual very hard. Just one, one nice hit. We'll send it through. And then I'll use a headset. I use the drift first. I punch my holes the same way you would drill a hole. If I wanted a one inch thick hole through a one inch thick piece of, one inch round hole through a one inch thick piece of metal, it's best to use a half inch hole first. Go with a small hole, a pilot hole, and then use a bigger rivet to finish it. 
I punch my holes the same way. I use a small slitter drift, and then I come back with a headset to open up the side of my hole. And I do this at a cold heat, so I don't get the distortion of the metal. And we can see our holes. We have our, our toenail just slightly coarser, our heel nail a little finer, or the number two nail a little finer, and the heel nail just a little, a little finer than that. And the whole key, even in my school, the whole key to making a handmade shoe, I want to produce a shoe that is better than a store-bought shoe. And you can buy a lot of store-bought shoes. Uh, the shoes we typically use are a diamond, uh, or a, or a St. Croix light, they're punched a little on the fine side. So I make sure our nails are punched coarse enough that we can nail them on nice. And I like to use, in the beginning, I like to use the uh, non-shaped shoes for the simple fact students need a lot of uh, work shaping shoes front to hinds and hinds to fronts. So we'll punch our holes on the medial side. Keep your tools cool. Get my pull about 70% down. Level it up. Get rid of my frog eye. I'm forging right on top of the horn with this frog eye. I don't want to change the shape of the shoe. I just want to remove the, the distortion that I made from the punch. Work your edges to clean your shoe up nicely. Level it up. And then bottom your punch out. More pitch in the toe, less pitch in the number two hole, and even less pitch in the heel. So we can size our nail with the headset. symmetry on each side. I made the shoe handmade so I've got my inside in a little bit and I've got my lateral quarter bend just a little lower right how I like it and I can also dissect going from my toenail down to my heel on each side. So the shoe turned out pretty good. I don't really have any complaints in it. I can put this in the truck, make another one and have a pair of front shoes to, to nail on tomorrow. So that's how that's pretty much how I teach to build up. Plain stamp, front horseshoe.